In this short tutorial, we're going to look at how to create a lens flare inside of Capture One Pro. Hi there, Michael here from Vibrant Shot. You can find me via the social media links below and also at VibrantShot.com. So in this short tutorial, we're going to look at sort of an extension of my previous video. If you watched that video on masking and layers, we're going to reuse one of the images that we used there and add something of a lens flare to it. Now, this is fairly easy to do inside of Photoshop because we have things like obviously, you know, filled layers and uh, blending modes and things of that nature. Uh, in Capture One Pro, we don't quite have that. So there's uh, little things that we can do to sort of simulate a lens flare coming through. So in this particular image, we know that we've got the setting sun somewhere back here. Um, it's casting light in this sort of angle towards the subject so uh, this works quite nicely as a candidate for a lens flare and so if we toggle this on and off this was sort of the before this is sort of the after this is not something that I would recommend that you put in um, on an image before taking it into Photoshop if anything you can use the round trip tools for capture one to apply it to the finished product that you have in Photoshop which can be nice because um, you don't have to bake in this lens flare uh, inside the Photoshop file, you may choose to use it or not use it. So it's something that you can add after the fact using uh, one of the new tools inside of Capture One Pro 12, which is the radial gradient. So let's go ahead and turn this off and I'll just show you quickly how to create this. So let's go and create a new layer. We'll call it lens flare for this one so we can distinguish it from the old one I created. And we're going to bring up our gradient tool, which is the M key. And I'm going to click somewhere right down here in the corner because that's kind of where I assume that the light source is. And we're going to create something along these lines. Of course, I can refine this afterwards, so it's not a big deal. As we learned in the previous video, everything that the radial gradient does is actually kind of the opposite. So what's in here is not being masked in. It's what's around the actual radiant gradient, uh, radial gradient that is being masked in. So what you want to do now is once we... Um, finish here, we want to invert the mask. So let's just select invert mask from this drop down right up here. So there is the area that's going to be affected by our flare. So let's just hide that mask now. And there's a couple of things that we're going to do to sort of simulate a lens flare. So first of all, we know that with a lens flare, we're probably going to be a little bit brighter than everything else. So we don't want to overdo this because then it just starts to look ridiculous. So something like, um, let's say a third of a stop. And we also know that uh, it's probably going to be a little bit blurry and muddled. So for that, I'm going to use some negative clarity. So inside the clarity section, I'm going to take the clarity slider down, um, let's say minus 40 or so. And let's just see what that does. If you hold down the optional alt key and toggle, um, in this case, it doesn't do a whole lot. But you can see it just kind of softens a little bit around um, this little dangling piece here. So it's just something to, to sort of muddle that area to make it look less clear. Uh, next thing we can do is go into our levels and let's mess around with this a little bit. So we're going to push the highlights a little bit more here. Oops, that's the wrong slider. We want this one here. So this is going to brighten our highlights. So let's pull that in a little bit. And maybe let's reduce our blacks because we know that it should wash out some of the shadows in there. So let's do that. Something along those lines. And then let's go into curve and then let's brighten it overall. So we'll take the highlight end and just kind of nudge it upwards to something like this. Now, this isn't really giving us entirely what we want because it's it's very kind of white and you know it's, it's not really matching the color of the sun. So let's go ahead and go into our color balance tool. And inside of highlights, we're going to select something yellowish like the actual background. And then we're gonna push some yellow color into there. So how much kind of depends on you know what you're in the mood for you can keep pushing it if you want i mean too far it starts to look off as well so we just want to eject a little bit of color into there but obviously not going too far with it so that's that and uh, let's go ahead and kind of see what this is doing for us so let's toggle that on and off and then we can of course move this around so if we decide that we want this to be further down here or if we want to scale it a little bit more or we can hold down the shift key and that will kind of adjust the feather for us if we want to spread that feather out a little bit more and concentrate the main point a bit more which i think is a good idea for a lens flare so something along those lines and let's go ahead and toggle that one more time 
So there we go. There's kind of the lens flare there. And of course, you can adjust the extent to which uh, you adjust, you know, exposure. You can kind of look at maybe reducing contrast a little bit there, because once again, anywhere where there's a flare, there should be less contrast. And you can keep playing with these levels and curves. For example, we can wash out the blacks even more by pulling up on this end here. So there's a lot to do that, you know, you can kind of wash out the image without relying on things like we typically would use inside of Photoshop, which is something like uh, the blending mode. And so that's how we ultimately achieve a similar effect using the new radial gradient tool inside of Capture One Pro 12. So hopefully you found that tutorial useful. If you did, make sure you give me a thumbs up down below and also make sure you subscribe so that you get future videos just like this one. We'll see you next time.